بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وبعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته uh, إن شاء الله we will continue along with the introduction إن شاء الله we're going through the life of Imam Al-Baghawi رحمه الله تعالى and then we will start with his مقدمة or his own personal introduction uh, we mentioned Last week he was born, uh, there's a dispute about his birth date, but most of the scholars say that around 433 um, Hijri, ta'ala. Um, we didn't mention too much about his early life because there's not much reported about his early life. Uh, and the scholars, they say this is for maybe one of two reasons. Um, number one, maybe he didn't uh, grow up in a house of end, like knowledge. A lot of times when the, the scholars are mentioned in their early days, they grew up in a household that their parents or their grandparents or their uncles or somebody of their household was a person of knowledge. But apparently there's no known family members of Imam al-Baghawi that were great scholars. And other scholars say that also because he came from a very uh, poor family. You know, his father was like a, a merchant, a tradesperson that didn't make too much money. So he grew up in poverty basically. But Alhamdulillah, by Allah's fadl and tawfiq, with his knowledge, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lifted him up to be one of the greatest of Imams. Right? Like we said, he was Imam in tafsir, Imam in hadith, Imam in fiqh, fiqh, shafi'i fiqh. This is from how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lifts up those with knowledge. Um, you'll find many scholars in the past that may have come, they were former slaves, they were unknowns, but because of their knowledge, some of them were dis disabled came from very harsh backgrounds, but because of knowledge, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lifted them up in ranks and they became some of the teachers and the best of scholars. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He raises in the ranks those of you who believe and those who have knowledge. So <clears throat> his scholars, we mentioned, are many. Um, inshallah, you guys can go back to his biography to, to go through them. Um, we're going quickly so we won't have to you know, spend too much time uh, on his teachers and his students. But just to say that he studied under uh, many scholars and he took the tafsir and the hadith from known scholars in his country or his uh, place uh, in Khurasan close to uh, the Afghanistan region or the Persia region. Right? Uh, he, he has a sanid which we'll find in his tafsir, in his hadith uh, that are very uh, strong. He was known to be uh, a imam in the sunnah, you know, and we'll find, like we we'll read in his tafsir, he is one who goes, does the explanation of the Qur'an with the athar, with the book of Allah and the ahadith of the Prophet Sallallahu and the sayings of the companions. So he's known to be one of those who use the narrations, you know, most uh, prof prolifically. His aqidah, like we said, was that from Ahl sunnah wal jama'ah. Um, you know, he reported things as they came and he did not try to go into like uh, deviations or explain things away uh, in other uh, manners that don't accord to the people of Ahl-Sunnah and Jama'ah. Um, the scholars praised him in his ibadah, his worship, in his scholarship. Um, he is known to, uh, you know, be very one of those who worshipped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tremendously. And this is one of the Characteristics we'll find in our scholars, you know, they had a special relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ibadah, right? You'll find most of the seerah of the great scholars, they had some type of ibadah between them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? So no matter how much knowledge they were seeking, they had a, a sincerity in their heart for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they had a worship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and with this Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed their knowledge, you know? Many of the great scholars you'll find in their seerah, in their tarjama, in their uh, biographies that they had some type of special relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the goal of knowledge. It's not just to like increase factual, you know, points, but it's to get us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the whole point of why we're reading this tafsir, to understand Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's words and get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <clears throat> لقد تحلى الإمام الباغوي رحمه الله تعالى بصفات ومزايا كان لها أكبر الأثر في تسمية بلقب محي السنة والإمام أهل السنة 
he says that Imam al Baghwi he uh, exemplified the characteristics that earned him the nickname of Muhi Sunnah, the reviver of the Sunnah, right? Or the Imam of the Sunnah. وَغَيْرَ ذَلِكَ مِنَ الصِّفَاتِ الَّتِي أَثْبَتَهَا لَهُ كُلُّ مِنْ تَرْجَمَ لَهُ And other characteristics that he had that many people um, basically described him with. فَهُوْ إِمَامْ فِي كِتَابِ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى وَسُنَّةِ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ He is the Imam in the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. إِمَامْ فِي مذهب فِي مَذْهَبِهِ الَّذِي نَشَأَ عَلَيْهِ and he was an imam in his madhab that he grew up in. And this is the madhab of the Shafi'i. وَذَلَكَ بِحُكْمِ الْبِيَاءَ الَّتِي نَشَأَ فِيهَا And this is because the region he was growing up in at the time was Shafi'i. And he became a great imam in the fiqh of Shafi'i. Um, you know, he was mujtahid in that madhab. And he reached the point where even like he could give his own fatawa. وَالْعُلَمَاءَ الَّذِينَ أَخَذَ عَنْهُمْ And this is because most of the scholars of his time that in his area that he was in were the Shafi'i Madhab. But he was not like muta'asib to the Madhab. He didn't, you know, make like enmity to other, towards other Madhabs and he did not mind taking from other Madhab, right? So that's the difference between some people, they become so fixated on their Madhab and they think other, every other Madhab is wrong and that's not the correct way of Ahl Sunnah and Jama'at, right? All of them are tariqahs or Madhabs are ways to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَأَخَذَ يَدْعُوا إِلَى الْأَتِصَامِ بِالْوَحْيَيْنِ كِتَابِ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى وَسُنَّةِ رَسُولِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمِ And the Imam, he started to call towards holding close and being tight to the Book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Sunnah of the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم هُمَا أَصْلُ الدِّينِ And this is the foundation of our deen. وَمِنْ هُمَا يَصْدِرُ كُلُّ أَمْرٍ شَرْعِي And from them both, all of the sharia is uh, taken from. The Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, right? Allah, He sent down His book and He sent down His Messenger وسلم, to teach the book. And all the sharia is taken from that. وَهَذَا حَالْ عُلَمَاءَ الَّذِينَ نَهَضُوا بِهَذَا الدِّينَ عَلَى بَصِيرَةٍ مِنْ أَمْرِهِمْ And this is the way of the scholars who became great in the religion um, and were given the foresight, the basira, by taking this manhaj. And Imam Al-Dhahabi, rahimullah ta'ala, one of the great scholars of Islam, he said that Imam Al-Baghwi, rahimullah, used to be nicknamed with Muhi Sunnah, the reviver of the Sunnah. Wa Rukn al and the pillar of the Deen. Wa kana Sayyidan, he was a leader. Imaman, Aliman, a great scholar. Allama, Allama is like the greatest of scholars. Zahidan, he was known to be Zahid. Zahid is one who is uh, leaving the dunya basically, right? Qani'an bil yasir, and he would suffice with a little bit. It's reported in some of the narrations when he was growing up and when he was seeking knowledge that he would only eat bread, dry bread. That's the only food he had, bread and water. Like our Prophet ﷺ, he would go months without eating anything except dates and water or bread, small bread and water. And this is a hikmah that sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he puts barakah because once you fill the butun, the stomach, the kirsh, right? It makes the dahn thaqil, the dhakira thaqil, right? You know, that's the Prophet said, Sharra Mamana ibn Adam, Wayan Sharra min Batnihi, that Ibn Adam did not fill a vessel worse than his stomach. And that's why we should never fill our stomach. But anyway, it's reported that the Imam would be sufficed with just bread and water, subhanAllah, because he was very poor when he was growing up. And they said when he got older and became a scholar, he would have bread and maybe like a little bit of olive oil with the bread, subhanAllah. Rahimullah ta'ala. So he was Zahid. قال حافظ السيوطي رحمه الله تعالى في طبقات الحفاظ وبورك له في تصانيفه لقصته الصالح فإنه كان من علماء ربانيين ذا تعبد ونسك وقناعة باليسير. إمام السيوطي رحمه الله he says that Imam al-Baghawi 
the one that we're studying about right now, was given barakah in his works. Like we said, subhanAllah, his tafsir, Mu'alam al-Tanzir, is one of the great works of tafsir that we know. His work in the sunnah, like the hadith, he has a whole collection of sunnah hadith, one of the greatest works of hadith. Uh, in the fiqh of uh, Imam al-Shafi'i, rahimahullah, he also has one of the great works. So he was given blessings in his uh, books that he was given. And he said, لِقَصْدِهِ الصَّالِحِ Because his intention was, inshaAllah, pure. He had good intention. And we said that was a description for the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in knowledge, in books, in any of your endeavors. The more you have ikhlas for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the more Allah azza wa jal, he puts barakah in, his, in your works. Right? That's why the Sahaba, radiallahu anhum, they were considered the best of the best. They didn't have the most wealth, they didn't do the most ibadat, but they had the most ikhlas. That's why the Prophet said that if you were to spend a mountain of Uhud in dhahab, in gold, you would not equal one handful of what Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu spent because he spent it with such ikhlas. So the more ikhlas you have in your works, the more Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he puts barakah in it. And in Tabaqat al Mufassirin, it says, Kana imaman fi tafsir, imaman fil hadith, imaman fil fiqh. That Imam Baghi rahimullah was imam in tafsir, in hadith, and in fiqh. Wa qal ibn Kathir rahimullah ta'ala fil bidahi ibn ayah. Wa kana adlama, adlama tu zamanihi. Wa kana deenan, deenan, waraan, zahidan, abidan, salihan. He was an imam of his time, a scholar of his time. And he was very religious and very, he had wara. Wara means that. He left that which is halal, being afraid to follow, fall into that which is doubtful, right? He left the doubtful matters. So some of the great scholars, they would always, if there's any form of doubt in it, they would leave it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So not to be any doubt. This is wara. Zahidan, like we said, he was away from the dunya. Abidan, a worshiper, salihan, righteous. وقال ابن خلكان خلكان في وفيات الأعيان الفقي الشافعي المحدث المفسر كان بحرا في العلوم إمام الخلكان خلكان he said that he was a faqih he was an imam uh, in the shafi madhab he was a muhaddith he was a mufassir the one who explained the Quran one who, who narrated the hadith وكان بحرا في العلوم and he was an ocean of knowledge Imam Baghi rahimahullah, he left for us um, many, many books. Some of them are still around. Some of them we have not uh, found yet. They might be like in what's called makhtutat. So some of the books or the works that were written in the past, um, they're mentioned in the past, but we don't see them in the present because they may have become lost. Uh, and sometimes that w that's why some of the scholars of the old, when they go through the old libraries and the old books, they discover these works and they bring them out to us, which is a blessing. Um, one of his works and famous works is called At-Tahdeeb Fi Fiqh Al-Imam Al-Shafi'i Rahimahullah Ta'ala Wa Hu Kitab Al-Mashhoor Wa Tadawulu And Al-Shafi'iya So Tahdeeb is a famous book in the Shafi'i Madhab And this is the book that Imam Al-Baghwi Rahimahullah Ta'ala compiled uh, to put a condensed explanation of the Fiqh of the Shafi'iya Rahimahullah Ta'ala uh, It's basically just the statements of the Madhab um, summarized so it's easy to understand and to learn uh, and many scholars like Imam Al-Nawi Rahimahullah Ta'ala in Nurud Al-Talibin um, and other scholars they reported and they took from this uh, statement because they saw him as an Imam in the fiqh in this book here Mu'alim Al-Tanzeer obviously it's known as popular as Tafsir Al-Baghwi this is one of the great works of Tafsir that we have um, it's considered the works of Ahl Sunnah Wal Jama'ah and many scholars depend upon it and like I said it's Tafsir Bil Athar so he goes with the narrations. Then he has Sharh al-Sunnah. And this is like I said, this is a book in the explanation of the Sunnah uh, in which he compiles many of these uh, great ahadith. And he has a great, considered one of the great works of the ahadith. Masabih <laughs> al-Sunnah. Also another book in the Sunnah that he has written. Um, and like I said, there's many other, uh, he did Jama'a Sahihain, which is a compilation of the two books of uh, Bukhari and Muslim. Uh, Majmu'a Min Al-Fatawa, he has a book about the Fatawa. 
he wrote a book in Hadith Arba'in Hadithan. Like many of the scholars of the past, they would have the 40 Hadith. Like we know the famous one, Imam al Nawi's Arba'in al uh, Many scholars of the past would have um, their collection of Hadith, uh, and they could they could they choose like 40 Hadith that are usul of Deen or in a certain subject matter that they would write and compile to make it easy for the students to memorize and like act upon them, right? And many of the great uh, topics. Uh, he passed away, Rahimullah Taala, in Shawwal, in. Uh, 526 from the Hijrah, according to most scholars, Rahimullah Ta'ala. Um, and like I said, you know, this work is a blessed work that many of the scholars have uh, praised, and we're going along uh, with it because. As I said before, many people have tafsir ibn Kathir um, and other tafsir, and I would like, inshallah, while we're going along, if you have that tafsir to read along with us, um, and if there's other points that you can bring to mention, inshallah, to increase the benefit, that would be appreciated. Um, I'm also going to bring from some other tafsir a little bit to make you know, some more benefit, inshallah, for us all. Um, but of course, we're sticking to this main text. I'm not going to go through every single word, but I will. Inshallah, bring about the most uh, important points, at least from every uh, tafsir. So, with that, Inshallah, we'll start with the Imam's Muqaddama, Rahimullah Ta'ala. <coughs> In one narration, it starts with Bismillah Rahman Rahim, Rabbi Yassir Wa'an. In the name of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, the most merciful, the most beneficent. Uh, oh, my Lord, make it easy and help us. Right. And the Bismillah is a Sunnah to start with because like we say the Fatiha which we're going to get into starts with Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. So it's a Sunnah of the Ulama Rahimullah Ta'ala to start with the Bismillah. Um, also in the rewritings of the Prophet وسلم, when he wrote to Haraq, uh, you know, the Emperor of Rome, he started with Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Um, also in uh, Imam, uh, sorry, in Nabi Suleiman Wasalam, when he wrote to the Queen uh, Sheba, she, he wrote also Bilqis, he wrote Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Right? So it's a sunnah of the scholars to start with Bismillah or Alhamdulillah. Qal Imam al Shaykh al Imam al Ajil al Sayyid Muhi Sunnah Nasr al Muhaddith Rukn al Deen Abu Muhammad al Hussein ibn Mas'ud al Farra Rahimullah Ta'ala. Um, I didn't mention also Farra is like the one who sells furs. So it's said that his family, his father, was in that type of commerce to, to make money when he was younger. Alhamdulillah, the Adamati wal Kibriya. All praise be to the one who is the most great, the most supreme, or the one of greatness and supremacy. Wal Izzati wal Baqa. And honor. And everlastingness, and highness, and uplifted forever, uplifted, and proper uh, praise. Taala an al andadi wa shuraka. He is far above any uh, type of companions or partners. Wa taqaddasa an al amthari wa nazara, and he is far above Subhanahu wa Taala. Any comparison and any uh, similitude. Wasalat ala nabihi was safihi Muhammadin Khatim al Anbiya wa Imam al Atqiya. And may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon the Prophet and his chosen one and the seal of all the Prophets and the Imam of all those who have taqwa. Adid darwat al thara. Like we're sending praise upon the Prophet. The atoms of the soil, basically the amount of atoms, molecules, dust, or particles of soil, that's how many times we're sending salat on Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the amount of stars in the heavens, right? So meaning billions and billions and billions and trillions and trillions and trillions of salat was salam ala Sayyid al-Mursaleen Nabiyyina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Walhamdulillahi al-Malik al-Salam. And praise be to Allah, the King of and the, the one of peace, and Mu'minun Muhaymin, the one who gives Iman, and the one who is 
a guardian, al-alam, the most knowledgeable, shar al-ahkam, the one who legislates the ahkam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Dil jalali wal ikram, the most honorable, the most noble. Alladhi akramana bideen al-islam, the one who honored us with the religion of Islam. وَمَنَّ عَلَيْنَا بِنَبِيِّنَا مُحَمَّدٍ عَلَيْهِ تَحِيَّةُ وَالسَّلَامِ And he has gifted us, the Prophet Muhammad, may the best greetings and blessings be upon him. وَنْعَمَ عَلَيْنَا بِكِتَابَةِ الْمُفَرَّقَ بَيْنِ الْحَلَالِ وَالْحَرَامِ And he blessed us with the book that distinguishes between the right and the wrong, the halal and the haram. وَالصَّلَاةِ عَلَى حَبِيبِهِ وَخَيْرَتِهِ مِنْ خَلْقِهِ مُحَمَّدٍ سَيِّدِ الْأَلَامِ And again, Salat was salam ala habibihi. The blessings and peace of Allah be upon his beloved Muhammad Khayratihi, his best from the creation. Sayyid al Anam, the leader of all of humanity and all of creation. Adil Sa'at al Layali wal Ayyam, the number of hours in the nights and the day. Wala alihi wa ashabihi nujum al Dulam, and upon his family and upon the companions who are like stars in the darkness. وَلَا جَمِيعِ الْأَنْبِيَاءِ وَالْمَلَائِكَةِ الْبَرَرَ الْكَرَامِ And upon all of the prophets and messengers and the angels, the righteous angels and the noble angels. So this is the introduction beginning and we said it's a sunnah of the scholars and of the, prophet, of the Muslims in general to start with praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and mentioning the salat was salam ala rasulullah. In any majlis you gather together, if you don't have these, your majlis is deficient, it's naqis, right? And if anybody hears the name of the Prophet وسلم, and doesn't mention Salat was salam alayhi, he is considered from the Bukhala, the stingy ones. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he sent down his book through this messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the best of humanity. He sacrificed his life to deliver the deen for us. So the very least we can say was sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ جَلَّ ذَكْرُهُ أرسل رسوله بالهدى ودين الحق رحمة للعالمين. Because Allah subhanahu wa taala He sent His messenger with guidance and and the truth as a mercy to humanity. وبشيرا للمؤمنين and to give the glad tidings to the believers. ونذيرا للمخالفين and to warn those who go against. أكمل به بنيان النبوة. He completed with him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the building of Nabuwa, the building of prophethood. وَخَتَمْ بِهِ دِوَانَ الْرِسَالَةِ And he ended with him the books of messengers or message, messages. وَتَمَّ بِهِ مَكَارِمْ الْأَخْلَاقِ And he completed with him the most honorable of character and uh, akhlaq. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, إِنَّمَا بُعِثْتُ لِيُتَمَّمْ مَكَارِمْ الْأَخْلَاقِ That verily I was sent to perfect the character. It's as if the Prophet is saying one of the main reasons he was sent was to perfect the character of us, to teach us the right and the wrong, to give us good manners and good behavior and good uh, companionship. al Af'al and to do the best of actions. And he sent down with him the light to be guided with it from the darkness. الجهالة, and to be saved with it from the ignorance. And it's ruled that the one who follows it, the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, will have falah, success. And a loss for those who turn away from it after they hear it. Like we said before, مَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِي فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً ضَنْكَ وَنَحْشِرُهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ عَامَ Whoever turns away from my remembrance, we will gather him on the Day of Judgment blind, right? And he will have a miserable life, despicable life. مَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِي فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً ضَنْكَ A miserable one. أَعْجَزَ الْخَلِيقَ عَنْ مَعَارَضَتِهِ وَعَنْ الْإِتْيَانِ بِسُورَةٍ مِنْ مِثْلِهِ فِي مُقَابَتِهِ that the creation is incapable of going against it, the Book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they are incapable of coming with a surah uh, in comparison. Since the time of the Prophet until now, nobody has been able to come with anything like the Qur'an. 
And this is the continuous miracle that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down. وَسَهَلَ عَلَى الْخَلْقِ مَا إِعْجَازِ إِتْلَاوَتِهِ And he made it easy upon the creation um, along with its miracle, right? Recitation. It's always a form of miracle. There's always something new coming from it. There's always a benefit from it when you're reciting the Qur'an. This is a gift from Allah subhanahu He made it easy for us. لَقَدْ يَسَّلَّ الْقُرْآنِ لِذِكْرِ فَهَلْمٍ مُلْدَكِّرِ That Allah subhanahu has made the Qur'an easy. For, is there somebody who will remember? And he made it easy for the tongues to recite it. We see that from uh, the Arabs and the non-Arabs. You know, there are more non-Arab Muslims than there are Arab Muslims. This is a fact. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the recitation of the Qur'an easy for all. Right? That's why we have Hafad from every single country in the world. SubhanAllah. Right? They came, they grew. This scholar himself was not an Arab. He grew up in Persia. You know, Imam Bukhari, other scholars, great scholars, they came. This is a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He made the Quran. This is why he chose Arabic as the final language because he made it easy for us to learn. There is some secret in the Arabic language, right? And we're not saying that, you know, anybody that Arabs are better than non Arabs, etc., etc. Um, but the language, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he chose it for a reason. And as Muslims, we should be proud of that language and learn that language to understand his words. Amar Afihi wa Zajar. He has. Basically, told us things to do in it, and he has told us things to stay away from it. And he gave good tidings and he gave warnings. And he gave uh, basically a warning for those to take heed, to ponder over it. And there's no way to achieve this except by learning its explanation, the tafsir of the Quran, right, and understanding it. And knowing the reason why, the reasons of revelation and the rules in the Quran. And knowing that which was abrogated and what the abrogator was. Um, the general and the specific in the Quran. Right? The Quran has all of these things, the orders, the rules, the you know, general rules, the specific rules. Um, you know, and as we're studying tafsir, we're going to learn all of this, insha'Allah. Thumma huwa kalam mu'ajiz wa bahrun amik. To continue this speech of the Quran, it's mu'ajiz. It's a miracle. It's miraculous. Nobody can come with something like it. Wa bahrun amik, and it's a deep, deep ocean. Right? The more you delve into the ocean, the more you find and discover the gifts of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Right? This book that's been continuously studied for over 1400 years and scholars are still coming up with something new every day. This book that you recite, inshallah, all of us should be reciting often. Every time we recite it, if you recite it with dabr, with thinking and pondering upon it, you, you come with something new. Right. SubhanAllah, sometimes you'll just be thinking of an affair and you recite the Qur'an and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answers your question in the Qur'an. Right. This is a miracle, subhanAllah, that we should be like attached to. ثُمَّ هُوَ كَلَامُ وَجْنٍ بِحَقِّ وَبَحْرٍ عَمِيقٍ لَا نِهَايَةٍ لِأَسْرَارِ عُلُومِهِ There is no finishing or no end to the secrets of its knowledge. Meaning that the knowledge of the Qur'an is continuous. There is always some benefits and blessings coming out of it. وَلِذْرَاكِ الْحَقَائِكِ مَعَانِيهِ And always learning some of its meanings or secret meanings or benefits or blessings. وَقَدْ أَلَّفَ أَمَّةَ السَّلَفِ فِي أَنْوَعِي عُلُومِهِ كُتُبٌ كُلٌّ عَلَى قَدْرِهِ فَهْمِهِ وَمَلْغَ عِلْمِهِ And many of the scholars of the past have written in these sciences um, according to their understanding and their level of knowledge. فَشَكْرَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى سَعْيَهُمْ وَرَحِمُهُمْ كَافَتَهُمْ So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know, bless their endeavors and He is thankful you know, for their great gifts to us and may Allah have mercy upon them. He's talking about the imma of those who wrote in tafsir in the books of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now he goes and answers why did he write this book? فَسَأَنِي جَمَعَتُمْ مِنْ أَصْحَابِ الْمُخْلَسِينَ وَعَلَىٰ اِقْتِبَاسِ الْعِلْمِ مُقْبِلِينَ كِتَابٍ فِي مَعَالِمِ التَّنْزِيلِ وَتَفْسِيرِهِ That some of my beloved, you know, a group of my beloved ones, inshallah, the sincere ones, 
um, that are keen on seeking knowledge and getting knowledge, they asked me if I could write a book on the milestones of tafsir. Mu'alam uh, al-Tanzil. Mu'alam is like a milestone, basically, or alam is like, um, like a flag or a post. You know, in the past they would put some sign up for you to find, you know, a marker of where you're at, right? Or to reach a certain destination. So this tafsir is like, he named it after that, subhanAllah, mu'alam. Like there are milestones in the tafsir, there's signs in the tafsir he's trying to point to us to the right direction with. So I answered them, مُعْتَبِدًا عَلَى الْفَضْلِ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى وَتَسِيرِهِ um, that I answered them depending upon the benefit of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and making it easy from him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's, he's the one who makes things easy, right? That's why we say like always, Allahumma la sahla illa ma ja'altu sahla wa anta jaj al hazna idha shitta sahla That Allah, there is no one who makes things easy except you, so make the hardship easy for us, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is the one who yassir al-umur. Um, so he is depending on Allah in writing this tafsir, he's asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it easy for him. Um, another thing is that we said many of the scholars of old, they wouldn't do something except when the students asked him because they were you know, very humble. Um, and this is sometimes an inspiration from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for those who seek knowledge or gain knowledge that when somebody asks them, can you teach a class or can you write a book or something like that, it's a blessing to encourage them. Inshallah, the people that did that also, they will get blessings as well because they motivated somebody to go and teach the khair, the goodness. Right? And whoever teaches somebody something good and they act upon that, that person will get reward for it until Yawm Al-Qiyamah. So if you encourage, like imagine his students, they encourage the teacher, the Imam, to write the tafsir, inshallah he will get a portion in the khair, in the blessings of it because they motivated him through the inspiration of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to teach humanity. مُعْتَمِنْ عَلَى فَضْلِ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى وَتَيْسِيرِهِ مُمَثِّلًا وَصِيَّةِ رَسُولِهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ فِيهِمْ فيما يرويه أبو سعيد الخدري رضي الله تعالى عنه أنه صلى الله عليه وسلم قال and he said also I answered their call trying to follow the advice of our Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم who said إن رجالا يأتونكم من أقطار الأرض يتفقهون في الدين فإذا أتوكم فاستوسوا بهم خيرا that there will come to you people from the, the Prophet was talking to the companions there will come to you people from all parts of the world, right? That they're trying to learn the deen from you. So when they come to you, be kind to them and give them the good tidings. Meaning teach them, be gentle with them, right? This is why Islam spread so quickly and so fast through all the different regions, through all the different countries. Because the Sahaba took this advice, this particular narration might have some weakness in it, but the meaning is sound and there's other narrations that support it. Basically. When students of knowledge come, the teachers should give them glad tidings. They should encourage them, right? They want to make them go and teach others. And this is how the Ummah of Islam was from the very beginning. The Prophet ﷺ, he encouraged even, you know, like those people who knew how to read and write, he would encourage them to teach others of the Muslims so they can earn their freedom, for example, if they were imprisoned. Um, he encouraged, بَلِّغُوا عَنِّي وَلَوْ آيَةً Relay upon me even if it's one ayah, right? Deliver it, teach, right? Anytime you know something about Islam, you have an obligation to teach it. And I feel very bad sometimes that we are in a society that we live predominantly amongst non-Muslims, and we are having this light and this treasure in our hand, and we don't share it with the others, right? So many people, uh, unfortunately, have a very bad misconception of Islam because their source of Islam is you know, media or propaganda, negative propaganda or, or, or something like that. But we who have the truth, we are shy or embarrassed sometimes to call it Islam. And I don't know why that is the case, but as a Muslim, inshallah, if you have the opportunity, give da'wah. You don't know who is going to accept your message, right? And be keen on spreading the deen, spreading the khair. The shar, the evil, is 24-7 spreading. The shaitan is always trying to spread evil, right? You turn on the TV, a'udhu billah, evil. You know, the news you get, evil. You walk out of the streets, evil. Audible, always evil, 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 evil. Where is the khair? Where is the good? You know, teaching al, giving da'wah, doing a'mal al-saliha. This is the one that we fight the evil with and try to make. We should be benefit to our society wherever we go. 
مقتداء بالماضين من السلف في تدوين العلم إبقاء على الخلف وليس على ما فعله مزيد ولكن لا بد في كل زمان من تجديد ما طال به العهد وقصر للطالبين فيه الجد والجهد تنبيها للمتوقفين وتحريدا للمتثبتين um, Also he said I'm taking the example of the salaf rahimullah ta'ala those from the past in spreading the knowledge or writing down the knowledge um, not because there's any deficiency in what they have given us but as time goes on people start getting away from the knowledge and they need someone to come back and revive it they need someone to bring them back to wake them up right to bring them back to the deen to bring them back to studying right all of us are in kind, constant need of tajdeed right if your today is not better than your yesterday there is an issue right so we should always try like to reach the levels like some of the salaf rahimullah ta'ala they said wallahi if you were to ask me i could not increase on what i'm doing anymore they reached that pinnacle of a khayrat al amal salih that if they were to die khalas they mashallah have reached the, the highest of levels qiyam al layl fasting sadaqa and so one thing even if you pray all this qiyam al layl and you fast every other day for example or twice a week or whatever you can always increase in ilm because there's no person that's a scholar that knows everything right so at the very least you can increase your knowledge every day by learning the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by learning the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam by memorizing the quran and the book of Allah okay you finish the book of Allah mashallah there's qiraat saba <laughs> qiraat al-ashr the seven qiraat the ten qiraat there's hadith bukhari hadith muslim right there's not there's no ending of ilm so in the very least you can increase your knowledge every day inshallah and be closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala فجمعت بيعون الله تعالى وحسن توفيقه فيما سألوا كتابا وسطا بين الطويل والممل والقصير المخل أرجو أن يكون مفيدا لمن أقبل على تصحيله مريدا and he says that um, I have gathered with the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his giving me uh, guidance basically in answering their question with my students they asked me to write a book for them in tafsir so I answered it with the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I wrote a book basically wasat al wasit like not too long but it becomes boring and not too short where it's deficient right so it's considered a medium work in tafsir right I think it's even shorter than tafsir ibn Kathir rahimahullah ta'ala um, obviously it's longer than the tafsir of Jalalain or Baylawi or others like that but it's considered a medium tafsir um, and he asks Allah, he hopes that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be beneficial for us, for those who are seeking, like the murid. وَمَا نُقِلَتْ فِيهِ مِنْ تَفْسِيرِ عَنْ عَبْدِ اللَّهِ بِنْ عَبَّاسِ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ حِبْرَ هَذِي الْأُمَّةِ وَمِنْ بَعْدِهِ التَّابِعِينَ وَأَمَّةِ السَّلَفِ Now he goes through his sources. So basically he, he is relating the tafsir from the salaf. First and foremost, Ibn Abbas, Allah Ta'ala, and he goes through his chains of narration. So we're not going to go through all the chains of narration, but I will mention the ones, the main ones. So Ibn Abbas is the main one. Um, Mujahid, Ibn Jibr al-Makki, one of the students of Ibn Abbas. Ata Ibn Abi Rabah, also one of the students of Ibn Abbas. And he goes, when I'm reading to you, each one of them, he's giving his son to them. So from his shaykh all the way to the Ibn Abbas. Right, he gets his tafsir to, the, to these chains of narrations. Uh, Hassan al Basri, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, Abi al Aliya, Zayd ibn Aslam, uh, Al Kalbi, Al Dahak, Muqatal, Al Siddi, or Suddi. Um, these are some of the ones that he has narrated from in his chains of narration to get his tafsir. So basically he is considered one of the scholars of the athar in which his narration, we said in the beginning that the tafsir is of two major types, the one of uh, narrations and the one of opinion. Uh, Imam al rahimullah, he used mostly the narrations to explain the ayat. So he would use Quran with Quran or hadith or sayings of the companions rahimullah, or the Arabic language or the qiraat. Um, and he, like I said, took all these chains of narrations from his uh, shiuch all the way back to the sources. 
فهذه أسانيد أكثر ما نقلته عن هؤلاء الأئمة وهو وهي مسموعة من طرق سواها تركت تركت ذكرها حذرا من إطالتي وربما حكيت عنهم. And he's saying that like the Sanid, he mentioned all the Sanid for this shiuch but he has many many more Sanid. He left them because he doesn't want to be too much for us, right? He's not going to report every single chain narration that he has but he just showed us a glimpse of what he's reporting and to know that his you know um, teachers and his chains of narrations are sound. Also, he mentions the qiraat that he uses. وَقَدْ ذَكَرْتُ ثُمَّ إِنَّ النَّاسِ كَمَا أَنَّهُمْ مُتَعَمِّدُونَ بِتِبَاعِ الْأَحْكَامِ الْقُرْآنِ وَحِفْظِ حُدُودِهِ فَهُمْ مُتَعَبِّدُونَ بِتَلَاوَتِهِ وَحِفْظِ حُرُوفِهِ عَلَى سُنَنْ خَطِّ الْمُصْحَفِ الْإِمَامَ الَّذِي اتَّفَقَتْ عَلَيْهِ الصَّحَابَةِ وَأَنْ لَا يَجَاوِزُ فِيمَا وَيُوَافِقَ الْخَطِّ عَمَّا قَرَأَ بِهِ الْقِرَاءَ الْمَعْرُوفُونَ القراء المرفون الذين خلف خلف وصحابة والتابعين واتفقت أمة على اختيارهم. Basically he's saying that just as it is obligatory for us to know the ahkam of the Quran, right, and containing its boundaries like knowing the halal and the haram, staying you know the right from the wrong, the do's and the don'ts, we also are supposed to worship Allah subhanahu wa taala with its recitation. Um, and keeping its letters. Um, so he's saying that the Quran is written in the Khat al Uthmani, right? It's written in a specific manner that the Sahaba عنهم, agreed upon, and we have to follow that Khat. We have to follow that writing of the Quran and the recitations that come from it. So the Qiraat. Um, that are acceptable only. And this is what the Imam is going to use, um, the different qira'at that are accepted by all of the scholars of Islam. There are some qira'at that don't meet the right requirements, and those are not acceptable in general, right? Um, some scholars use them for more explanation of tafsir, but they cannot come with a new ruling or a new um, understanding of the deen, obviously. Um, but the qira'at are seven or ten according to the main scholars. Uh, they are acceptable, and those other than that are usually considered shad or not acceptable. Uh, he reports from Abdullah ibn Kathir, rahimahullah ta'ala, uh, Abu Amr, Asim, Hamza, and Kasai. So these are some of the main qurra of the Quran that he takes from, and he has chains of narrations from it in his recitation. And this is also going to help um, in the tafsir. Uh, because sometimes when you see different recitations of the Qur'an, it gives a finer meaning to the verses, right? And it increases the understanding of the verses. Because the Qur'an was revealed in the Arabic language. This is also one of the miracles because it's written with one script, but it can be recited in different ways, right? And this is also another miracle of the Qur'an. Um, to make it easy for the different Arab tribes, the different tongues, to be able to um, memorize the Qur'an and recite the Qur'an. Then he starts with uh, the... Benefits of the Quran, right? The blessings. Fadail al Quran wa ta'alimihi. The Prophet ﷺ, I'll cut through the chains of narrations because, like, everything he's reporting, basically, he has a chain of narration for it. Khayrakum man ta'alam al Quran wa alama. The best of you are those who learn the Quran and teach it, right? This is the, if you're looking for the best job, like, you know, you want to be a CEO of something, this is it. <laughs> Right? You don't have no like basic, you don't have to spend money, you don't have to like, you know, have high degrees and different things. It just learn the Quran and teach it. Then you'll be the best of the best. The best with who? With Allah Azza wa Jant. Right? I don't think we need to care about being the best with others. If you're the best with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then alhamdulillah. So khayrakum in ta'alam al-Quran wa alam. The best of you are those who learn the Quran and teach it. Then he reported another narration um, by Al-A'war. Al -A'war. Al -A'war, he was like uh, one of the scholars of Islam also. Uh, he is like a deficiency in his eye. <laughs> you know, we have scholars of the past that were kind of given um, uh, nicknames based upon the deficiency and they accepted it. Like it wasn't something like, they, like don't call me that. Like Araj, he was crippled, right? But these scholars, subhanAllah, they had their deficiency physically, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them ilm. That was you know, a gift to humanity, right? To the point where they were like former slaves, you know, like Araj, I think. Oh, Araj also. They said like he was, you know, like a former slave, um, poor, 
not the best looking person, you know, he had the physical deficiencies, but the king's sons would come and sit at his feet to learn the ilm. The, kharif, the abna al khalifa would sit at their feet to learn the ilm. Like I said before, يَرْفَعَ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ عَمْلُوا مِنْكُمْ وَالَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْعَلْمِ دَرَجَاتَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lifts those with knowledge up, right? Nothing can hold them back. So he says, he was passing by the masjid. وَرَدْتُ فِي الْمَسْجِدِ فَإِذَا النَّاسُ يَخُوضُونَ فِي الْأَحَدِيثِ فَدَخَلْتُ عَلَى عَلِيِّ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ فَقُلْتُ يَا أَمِرِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ لَا تَرَى إِنَّ النَّاسَ قَدْ خَادُوا فِي الْأَحَدِيثِ So he said, I was passing by the masjid and I see the people basically delving into the ahadith. Is it the hadith of the Prophet said, or just normal, you know, different sayings, Allahu A'lam. But he said, O oh, mas- oh, uh, leader of the believers, meaning Ali, عنه, he was a khalif at the time, I went and I saw this happening. قَالَ أَوَ قَدْ فَعَلُوهَا Are they doing this? قُلْتُ نَعَمْ I said yes. قَالَ أَمَّا إِنِّي فَقَدْ سَمَعْتُ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول. As for me, I heard the Prophet say, أَلَا إِنَّهَا سَتَكُونُ فِتْنَةً Verily, there is going to come fitna, tribulation, trouble. قُلْتُ فَمَا الْمَخْرُجِ مِنْهَا يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ فَمَا مَخْرَجُ مِنْهَا يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ And I said to Prophet, Ali is saying to the Prophet radiallahu anhu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and what's the way out of it, O Messenger of Allah? What's the way out of this fitna, this trouble, this tribulation, this temptation? قَالَ كِتَابُ اللَّهِ The Book of Allah. فِيهِ نَبَأَ مَا قَبْلَكُمْ It has the news of those before you. وَخَبْرُ مَا بَعْدَكُمْ And the news of that which is to come after you in the future. حُكُمْ مَا بَيْنَكُمْ And it's a ruling between you. وَهُوَ فَصْلُ لَيْسَ بِالْهَزَلِ And it is the criterion. It's not a joke. It's not something light. مَنْ تَلَكَهُ مِنْ جَبَّارٍ قَسَمَهُ اللَّهِ Whoever leaves it from the arrogant ones, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will break them. وَمَنَ ابْتَغَى الْهُدَى فِي غَيْرِهِ أَضَلَّهُ اللَّهِ And whoever seeks guidance from other than it, Allah will lead them astray. وَحَبْلُ اللَّهِ الْمَتِينَ It is the rope of Allah, the strong rope of Allah. وَهُوَ ذِكْرُ الْحَكِيمِ It is the most wise of remembrances. وَهُوَ سِرَاطُ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ It is the straight path. هُوَ الَّذِي لَا يَزِيغُ بِهِ الْهَوَى That the, the, basically the misguidances or the Desire, lower desires cannot lead it astray. وَلَا تَلْتَبِسْ بِهِ الْأَلْسِنَةِ And the tongues can never confuse it. وَلَا تَشْبَعْ مِنْهُ الْعُلَمَاء And the scholars never get tired of it. وَلَا يَخْلُقْ عَنْ كِثَةِ الرَّدْ And they never get bored from it. Right? People reciting the Qur'an never get bored from the Qur'an. It's so beautiful that you always want to continue reciting it. وَلَا تَنْقَضِي عَجَائِبَهُ And its miracles never decease. His miracles are always continuous. And the jinn even never get tired of it. They say that they heard this Quran عجباً, something magnificent. يهدي إلى رشدي, it guides to that which is straight. فأمان به, so we believed in it. من قال به صدق, whoever speaks with it has spoken the truth. وَمَنْ عَمَلَ بِهِ أَجْرْ أُجِرْ And whoever acts upon it has received reward. وَمَنْ حَكَمَ بِهِ عَدَلْ And whoever governs with it or rules with it has indeed governed with justice. وَمَنْ دَعَى إِلَيْهِ هُدْيَ إِلَى صِرَاطٍ مُسْتَقِيمٍ And whoever calls to it has indeed been guided to the straight path. خُذْهَا يَا عَعُرْ And he said, take this, Abu A'ur. The, the student that came to him and said this to him, he said, take that. Basically, the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the makhraj from the fitna and the guidance for us, inshallah, to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, we will probably have to make the adhan and uh, the iqam will be 7.30, inshallah. We'll continue next week and finish the, tar- uh, the muqaddama of Imam al-Baghwi rahimahullah ta'ala, hopefully, and start Surah al-Fatiha. Um, if we have any questions, maybe one minute or two minutes, inshallah. Alhamdulillah. No questions. Zakumullah khair. Subhanakallah bihamdika ashadu wa la ilaha anta astaghfirullah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.